Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. Can you hear me? It is good to be here with you this morning, and um, we're thankful for God's safe traveling mercies. Um, and right as we got to church, uh, just down the road, uh, we were fortunate. We just missed an accident, and the car right ahead of us just was crossing the road, a truck, a white truck, uh, right on Maple and Fenton, and actually just slid off the road, a tree, and um, hopefully they were right. We called 911, and hopefully they're responding to them at this moment, but that was a close call, and so we thank God for safe, safe traveling mercies, but we also want to remember that um, car and the people inside the car, the Lord, that the Lord would uh, heal them and take care of them uh, this morning, and so it's it's Michigan. We know how the roads are when it snows, and so we want to thank God for bringing Keanu and I safely uh, back here uh, this morning. That was a close call. Um, so I thank the Lord uh, for being here. I thank the Lord for bringing us back to this church. Back a lot of memories for Kiana and myself, um, especially for those who don't know, we got married at this church uh, in 2018, in July 2018. So standing here brings back a lot of memories. Um, sometimes a lot of memories of the unknown, sometimes of nervousness, uh, standing here uh, waiting for my bride, but it was a joyous occasion. I thank the Lord for um, us getting married in this church, uh, and it's always a pleasure to come and worship with you uh, and to see your faithfulness and how you're continuing to serve God in all the different ministries of this church. Um, and so it's a pleasure to be here. Thank Pastor Hode for inviting me to speak um, here, and I believe today is Black Sabbath. Uh, it's February, and so this is the beginning of Black History Month in the United States. So he invited me to speak um, on this subject. Kiana and I just came back from uh, Kenya in East Africa. We spent the last four weeks there, so we spent quite some time, took off time, took time off work, uh, and went back to Kenya. Kenya, as I said, is in East Africa. That's where I am originally from, if you did not know. And so I took this journey back home after 22 years. I came to the United States when I was 14 years old. Um, we moved to Berrien Springs, Michigan. My dad was going to the seminary at Andrews University. And since that time, I had never had the opportunity to go back home. So as you know, home was a little frightening because I didn't know what to expect in many ways. I had not seen a lot of my family members, a lot of my cousins who I, who I grew up with had not seen. And so when I went back home, I was met with a lot of surprises indeed. And a lot of my cousins are grown up. They have their own children. Um, and to see how much you know, life has changed in many ways was interesting. But it was also a blessing to see how God has taken care of a lot of the people who I left behind. Uh, when I came to the United States in 1998. And so it is within that time frame that we had an opportunity to go and to visit a church, a village church. And this village church so happens to be my original home church. You see, that church was where my grandfather pastored. The Seventh-day Adventist church in a town called Malanga. I'm not sure if you can say that with me, but it's called Malanga in a village on the western part of Kenya. That area is known for its fishing. And so we went to that town and we worshiped at that church in Malanga. It's the Malanga SDA Church. And we had Sabbath school outside under a tree. And we worshiped in, inside the small white church that was still there when I was growing up. But now they're building a bigger church right on top of it, right above it and around it. And it was a pleasure to go back home and to experience in that community. And you know, especially because of what it meant to me personally. And I know it meant a lot to Kiana as well. But something that struck me was when we walked into that church, you see, I didn't know what to expect. But I was taken aback by the devotion of all those we encountered. But something that really strikes me and something I've been reflecting upon even at that time was walking into the church after Sabbath school and worship service began. And in that church, when you say happy Sabbath, they say happy day. 
So we would say, happy Sabbath. They would say, happy day. And happy day because the Sabbath is a happy day, amen? amen? And the entire church would say happy day, not just one person, two people, a small section. The entire church would respond. And I was like, this is, this is amazing. This is interesting. I'm not used to that. <laughs> and so the service continued, and, and it came a point where they were dedicating leaders of the church. And they have the dedication ceremony, and so they start calling out names and I start looking out and seeing people getting up from the pews and going up front. And they're young and old, middle-aged, getting up and going up. And at some point, I, I almost I was going to get up. It seemed like everybody was going up. And I was by the level of service that you could see in that church. And on our pew sitting with us was my grandmother. My grandmother is 85 years old. And they called my grandmother to get up, and my grandmother is a Pathfinder. And she works with Pathfinders. She loves Pathfinders. And she gets up, and she's going up to serve, 85 years old. My grandmother, you see, she refuses to leave church at 1 or 2 or whenever the service ends. You see, she stays at church until 6 p.m. every Sabbath. My grandmother loves the church. She loves ministry. She loves service. But you see, it was not just witnessing the devotion of my grandmother, but seeing how others were getting up. Others were going up to serve. And in that church, you could sense the work of the Holy Spirit. You see, when they sang songs, everyone would sing. There was so much passion and devotion in that church. You see, that church is not a wealthy church. That church doesn't have a lot of the things that we have in our society today. It does not have the nice building. It does not have the nice pulpit. It does not have all of the different technologies that we have. It does not have a lot of the comforts that we have. As I mentioned, we worshiped outside during Sabbath school under a tree, enjoying the hot weather and the cool breeze. But they, they don't have much. But yet they gave what they had to the Lord. Amen. They are giving what they have. And, and I was watching it, even during offering time, everybody would go up. You see, during offering, the deacons don't go around collecting, or the deaconesses don't collect offering. You go up front to give your offering. And you know, the exchange rate, you know, the dollar and the Kenyan shilling, you know, obviously it's lopsided, right, in favor of the dollar. So you're like, how much value is that shilling, that two shilling or three or four or ten? How much are you giving? But they were giving diligently. And, and when you go outside, you can see the new church being built on top of the old church. And you can see that these people have made a decision to commit their lives to the Lord and to serve regardless of their station in life. And when I was there, I got emotional. I almost started crying and just reflecting upon the legacy of faithfulness that I have been blessed with. The legacy that God has provided me and you know it's important in life to look back at history, not to forget where God has brought you. And as I was there, God touched my heart. And he reminded me of my need to be faithful to him. See, friends, that is, a, that is what God wants us to do this morning. I believe that God is calling us not to forget the past, to remember our history. God has a special purpose that he, that he wants to use, especially when it comes to the history of his people. And so this morning, as we contemplate on black history and, and our collective history, I want us to focus on remembering what God has done for us. And so I apologize to those who made the bulletin, but the sermon title this morning is Remember. It is Remember. To, if you can, bow your heads with me as you have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this Sabbath day. We thank you that you have brought us here safely. Father, as we open your word, we ask that you would come and abide with us. Lord, we ask that you would speak. I am just a man, Lord, and Lord, it is not my words that you want me to deliver this morning, but we want to hear your words. And Father, we want you to speak to all of us. 
We ask that, Lord, you would hide me behind the cross. You would increase and I would decrease. And may we leave here different than when we came closer, having had an experience with you. In your name I pray, amen. Turn with me to the book of Judges, chapter 2, verses 7. Judges, chapter 2. And we look at a familiar passage. I'm sure many of you know the story of the judges in the Bible. And if you do not know, that's, it's an interesting time for the people of Israel. In the book of the Judges, we know the famous stories of Samson and Delilah. We know the stories of Deborah. We know the stories of Gideon. We know the stories of the children of Israel and how they had an inconsistent walk with God. But I want to say something interesting in the book of Judges. You see, when we look at Judges, especially starting in verse 7, there's a special message that God has for us this morning. And it ties into remembering. In verse 7, if we were there, it reads, So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord which he had done for Israel. In verse 8, it reads, Now Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died when he was 110 years old. And they buried him within the border of his inheritance at Timnath Harris, in the mountains of Ephraim, on the north side of Mount Gosh. When all that generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation arose after them, who did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done for Israel. And when I read that passage, I inquired, wait a minute, it says a generation, there was a generation that arose that did not know the Lord, nor the work which he had done. It is they could not remember what God had done for them. You see, friends, when we look back at the story of the children of Israel and we read that passage, we can, we can ask the question, how could you forget the God that brought you out of the bondage of slavery in Egypt? How could you forget the times when God led you by the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night through your journey to the land of Canaan? How could you forget God supplying manna for you on that journey how could you forget the God that parted the waters, the part of the seas that you could escape Pharaoh and his army? How could you forget the work that God had done? Even in the previous book, in Joshua, we see the work that God did because in Joshua we know that Joshua was victorious in many battles. In fact, it goes on, if you read the story of Joshua, there were 13 battles, 12 of which the Israelites won. And they had a great victory because of who was leading them. It was not by their own might, but it was God that was giving them victory. And we see in the book of Joshua that God's hand was instrumental. Is that they forgot. They had forgotten this God. Just a few generations who had given them many victories. But you see, the people at this time are not a common people. The Israelites, during the days of the judges, are a people who forget and who forgot easily. If you read the story of the judges, you hear the continuous cycle of forgetfulness, the continuous cycle of returning to evil, and you ask yourself, how can you return to evil continuously, yet you see the hand of the Lord working? You see the hand of the Lord delivering you with every opportunity. When they were unfaithful, yet God was still faithful, than, faithful to them. When they turned back to him, God would turn back to them and deliver them. Yet it goes on to say they, they forgot. They did not know the Lord. It's one thing to forget the Lord. How could you forget the Lord? He's been instrumental in your life. He's been instrumental in the life of your people. 
Your origin, your identity comes from him. And in, in contrast to all the other nations, <laughs> you, you were made to be peculiar. You were made to be special. You were made to be different. God designed you and made you with a purpose. They forgot the Lord, their creator. They forgot the Lord. And he goes on to say they forgot the work which he had done. You see, when you forget the Lord, it's most likely you will forget the work he has done in your life. As a result of not knowing him, how could they remember the work that God had done? And so it makes sense that the Israelites were position at this time. And his friends, it's, it's easy when we, we study this passage and we look at it and we, we say, you know, those were the children of Israel. They were, they were stubborn people. They were stiff-necked people. Look at them. How could you forget? It makes no sense. You, can see, you see God doing all this for you, and yet you forget? You see your heritage, and yet you forget? Man, you know, it's easy to say, you know, if, if that was me, there's no way I'd have forgotten. There's no way. There's no way. But is that true of us today? Is that true of us today? How many of us have that same experience where we forget the Lord? We forget the work he has done in our lives. We forget our heritage, our identity. And it ends up affecting our mission. It ends up affecting our future because of that. And so it's easy to look and to criticize from afar. But God wants this message to intertwine with our lives today. And so there, that generation is, no, is not that different from our generation in many respects. And so the message that God has through this experience comes down to us. And it's interesting when you go to verse 11, Judges chapter 2, it says, as a result, it says, then the children of Israel did what? It's okay to talk back to, talk back to me. They did what? Evil. Evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them and they provoked the Lord to anger. See, it made sense. When you forget the Lord, when you forget the work that he has done in your life, what else would you do? What other option do you choose? The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And in the book of the Judges, as you go through, this is a continuous theme of these children, right? As you read Judges and you go on, you see that they continuously do evil. The Lord will come and rescue them. And they go back and they do what? Evil. And that phrase, right, that they did evil in the sight of the Lord is repeated. And you ask yourself, how could they do that? Did they... Did they not understand what God was doing for them? And remember that God was still rescuing them time and time again. So you'd wonder, you'd, you'd ask yourself, well, if you're a rational person, or if, at least if you, if you can think, right, you're like, okay, God is, I can see the work that God is doing, right? Even if they did not know God, but they can see the work that he's doing in their lives. He can see them rescuing them time after time. The Bible says that there was a constant return to evil. There was a constant return to evil. And so, friends, I propose to you this morning that the children of Israel, the children of Israel did not understand history. They didn't understand the importance of remembrance, the importance of remembering their past. And as a result, it affected their present and it affected their future. And I was, I, was st- I was struck by the importance of remembering, but how do we remember? You see, it says in Judges chapter 2, verses 10, when all that generation had been gathered, 
to their fathers another generation who rose after them who did not know the Lord. There's an importance of maintaining, maintaining faith throughout different generations. What, what happened between those generations? Why was it that knowledge transferred down? Is it to say that those that came before, those that had seen God's work in their life and seen the deliverance he had provided, did not pass that knowledge down, did not share with those that came after them? Or could we say that the people were stubborn? The people made a conscious decision not to reflect on what God had done for them. They made a conscious decision to, to turn back, even though they knew. The people had made a choice. Yes, they may have known the history, but they had made a choice to neglect it. And to neglect it at their own peril. You see, this story is about remembering history. And as we celebrate Black History Month, one may ask, what does this story have to do with history? And why is history important to us? You see, history is important to all of us. Whether it's black history or any other history. As one author put it, history shapes our identity. Our identity defines our mission. And a clear mission determines the trajectory of your future. You see, friends, people take history for granted. And, and as, a, as a devout enthusiast and lover of history, and especially church history, I love church history, I love the Reformation, especially the Reformation, I don't understand why people don't understand the importance of history. If you don't understand history, how do you know where you came from? How do you know your identity? And, and living in this modern age when, when young people are facing challenges with their identity, we should ask more why we don't study history, why we don't understand, why we don't treasure that history. Because if many of our young people, and unfortunately not so young people, understood history, Maybe they would treasure more. Maybe they would understand God's calling and purpose for their lives. And maybe we would, as a church, stop asking the question, why do our young people leave the church? Friends, history is important. And as God had a, a special purpose for the children of Israel to remember what he had done, to remember him, I believe that God has the same purpose for us today. In our own history as human beings, through the realm of American history, and when we look at black history, I believe that all of this collective history is important for all of us. See, black history is not just important for black people. Black history is not just important for those who are white or other colors. Black history is important for all of us. You see, through the context of history, we can understand the past. We don't just look back at the past and, and we don't look at it from a critical point of view and, and, and look at it to criticize one group or the other. But through history, we can understand the flaws of the past. We can understand the challenges, some of the mistakes that we have made as a collective. You see, some of the challenges of the past when it comes to black history are, are issues of the heart. Hatred does not know any color. Prejudice does not know any color. Segregation and racism does not know any color. I challenge you, go somewhere else in this world. Go to other countries where they have different tribes or different peoples, and you will find the same treatment of one group against the other. In my opinion, as I mentioned, we just visited not too far from that country is another land of Rwanda, and we know what happened in that land. Two tribes warred against each other, and one almost eliminated the other because of the hatred they had towards one, the other group. Friends, hatred does not see any color. Hatred is an issue of the heart. We study history to understand the errors of the past, that we may not repeat them, that we may learn from them as 
A famous quote says, those who forget history are what? They're doomed to repeat it. But how often do we forget history? How often do we forget it even in our modern time? And yet we see the same results occurring in our time. We see the same repetition occurring. And it's not just in this country, but around the world. And I believe that God is reaching to the human heart. He says, I want you to know your past. But you know, in the, in the story of the judges, in, in, in chapter 2, verses 10, God is, God is looking and he's not just saying learn history for the sake of learning history. Not, don't just learn history from a secular standpoint, but learn history so that you can understand the work that I have done. You can understand who I am. So God was interested in them knowing him. God was interested in them knowing him. And, and we look back at black history, we wonder if, if those who had come before us had known God. If they had truly known him, would they have done what they did? If they had truly known the work that he had done in their life, would they have subjected their fellow human beings to what they did? When we look back at history, when we look specifically at black history, we not only see the challenges of the past, but we see God's hand guiding through that time as well. In black history, we often take time to remember those pioneers that came before us. Remember those men and women who were trailblazers, who in the midst of trial, in the midst of persecution, in the midst of even death, they stood courageously for what was right. They stood for others. They risked their lives. They persevered. They were faithful. Regardless of how long it took, they said, I, I will not submit to my condition, but I will do the work that God has given me even in this position. As crazy as it may sound, as much tri tri tribulation as I'm going through, I will remain faithful. I will be diligent. And in history, we see black men and, and, and women that have toiled, that have accomplished much in this world and in this country, for that matter of fact. But we see God's hand guiding. And we also see God's hand guiding not just in those who are oppressed, but we see God's hand guiding even in the oppressors, as it were. Because in God's hand and through his guidance, we see reconciliation. We see what Martin Luther King said when he talked about being his children being judged by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. We see how that became a reality in many ways. It's not perfect, but we see how God moved on the hearts of men and women to say that, no, it doesn't matter what the color of your skin. It doesn't matter what that, the color of your skin, it matters the content of your character. We see God's hand moving in the lives of men and women who refused, who refused to be controlled by hatred, but instead chose to love one another. You see, in history, God has a purpose. God wants us, first and foremost, to understand who he is. My question is for you, do you know history? And do you know God's history in your life? Who are you? Remember, history shapes your identity. Who are you? Are you created by God? Is your identity in Christ? When you think of who God is, you can't help to reflect, to understand that you are of important value. Amen? You are of important value. God made you, each one of us, you and I, unique, different. Regardless of what part of the world we come from, regardless of our experiences, God made us unique. And God values you the same, regardless of what you look like, regardless of where you come from. God values you.
And it's interesting that when we look at history, when we understand who God is, we don't just stop there. How many times have you taken, how many times have you taken the time to reflect on what God has done for you? Do you take time to consider what he's done? Do you take time to consider the many victories he's given you in your life? Do you take time to consider how faithful he has been? Even when we have been faithless, God has been faithful to us. But do we take the time to reflect and remember what God has done for us? You see, the children of Israel forgot the work that God had done. And see, when they forgot, guess what happened? The result was they did what? They did evil. And I propose to you the same occurs with us today. When we don't take the time to remember who God is. But not just that, what he has done in our lives. You were here this morning. I just mentioned we were driving on this road. And a car almost hit us. The car was right in front of us. But by God's grace, we arrived here safely. But by his grace. Evidence right now on the road. Evidence. And yet we forget. Week after week, do you take the time, day after day, to remember only recent history when you look back and see the trajectory of your life or your family's life or your nation's life? Do you look back and see how far God has led us? And during Black History Month, as we celebrate those who have come before us, as we look back and we see the hand of God moving in the lives of people that shape the nation, we can see that it's only by God's work in the hearts of men and women. You see, you cannot love your neighbor as yourself if you have hate in your heart. You cannot treat people differently based on the color of their skin if you have love in your heart. But what changes the man? Do we change ourselves? No, it is the work of the Holy Spirit that changes us, changes us. When we look back and we see the hand of God moving among men and women, what does that do in our lives? As that, that author said that history shapes our identity. Identity defines our, anyone who's listening, our identity defines our, our mission. I'll give you a pass. <laughs> It defines our mission. It defines our mission. The children of Israel had a, did they have a mission? Did they have a mission? Did, 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 did God just create them and let them wander around? And they just had no, they had no purpose. Did they have a mission? They had a mission. God had a specific purpose for them. They were to be missionaries. They were to be witnesses of what God can do when you surrender your life to him. If they had been faithful, yet God calls us today to the same. He wants us to have a clear mission in our lives. And he has given us a mission. Amen? God has given us a mission. Each of us has, have a mission. In our faith movement, God has given us a mission, not just of sharing the everlasting gospel, but to prepare people for his soon second coming. Amen? God has given us a mission. And if you do not believe God has given you a mission, study what God has done in your life. Look back at what he has done. Do you understand your identity in him? God has given us a mission. As a result, our mission determines the trajectory of our future. If we do not have a mission, where are we going? Are we aimlessly wandering? Are we following a path to the unknown? Or are we following the path that God desires for us? You see, the children of Israel, if they had understood their identity in God, if, if they had understood their mission, 
they would have had a clear purpose. The, verse 11 would not have read, then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And chapter after chapter in the book of Judges would not have read, they, they did evil in the sight of the Lord. They would have understood their mission, and the cycle of sin, the cycle of repetitive failure would have ended. And how many times in our lives do we, do we look back and we see the same cycle of repetitive failure? The same cycle here, God is, God is saying, I, I don't want you to wander aimlessly. Your purpose in life, your mission in life is much bigger than the direction in which you're going. Stop. Stop. Turn around. Turn around. That's not the, the purpose for your life. That's not my plan for you. But because we do not know him, how can we know where he wants us to lead us? How can we know where he wants to lead us if we do not know him? Friends, history is important. In Judges chapter 2, verses 1, it reads, Then the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bosham and said, I led you up from Egypt and brought you to the land of which I swore to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? I love that verse. God says, I led you up from Egypt. God is bringing them back to who he is. God is the one who was their savior. God is the one who freed them from the bondage of slavery. God is drawing them back to who he is. And he wants them to recognize that. And he said, this is the work that I've done for you. I brought you out from the land, brought you to the land which I swore to your father. I brought you out from bondage to the promised land. And he says, I will never break my covenant with you. You see, God remembers us. I want us to remember that God does not forget the promises that he makes. God does not break the covenant that he makes with us. He says, I will never break my covenant. In some versions it says, I will keep my covenant forever with you. Friends, when we forget history, it affects our identity. It affects our mission. It, it affects the trajectory of our lives. But friends, I want us this morning to remember that as we look back on history, as we look back on black history, the most important aspect is what God is doing for each and every one of us. We should not be like the Israelites who repeatedly forgot God, who had repeatedly forgot what he had done in their lives. Their failure to remember him led them to future failures. In Psalm 105, verses 8, the psalmist writes, God remembers his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations. God remembers his covenant with us, and remembrance is important. In the Psalm, the psalm 143, verses 5 and 6, why is it important to remember? The psalmist says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse on the work of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Remembrance in this context led to the longing for God. Ecclesiastes 12, verses 1 says, Remember God in your youth. Right? Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come, and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. It's important to remember God in the different stages of our lives. Psalm 77, verses 11 says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. 
remembering what God has done. Isaiah 46 verses 9 says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. There is nothing or no one comparable to God. God reminds us constantly in the Bible. In fact, if you read the Bible and you study, and you look at the word remember, it's actually listed over 148 times, it's about 148 times, based on the New King James Version. Other versions may be a little less or more. But remember is the constant theme of the Bible. God wants us to remember. He does not want us to forget. And our forgetful people are a people that do not know their future. God wants us to remember, especially in this time. And as we look back at black history and as we contemplate the lives and we look at the things that have been done to, for progress to come to our nation and to our world, yes, it's important to celebrate the victories. It's important to celebrate the people. It's important to remember the work that they have done. And there are many of them, even in our faith denomination, who are part of the movement of freedom. Amen? And we remember them and thank God for their lives and what they accomplished. But I propose this, I propose this morning to you that black history is the overall, and history overall is what we need to be concerned about as individuals. Black history, any other history. But God wants us to remember all history. Amen? All history. Because it's important not to minimize what black did or from African descent did. But it's important for us to remember what God has done. And even as you celebrate the lives of people who have faced challenges and overcome adversity, the one constant theme that we see is what God has done in their lives. There is no way we could have arrived at this point if God was not involved. And so during this month, a lot of different tributes and a lot of different shows and this and that and events, I want you to take the time and partake of those events. Remember, God has a bigger purpose for us. You see, when we cross to the land of Canaan, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. It's not going to matter whether you're black or white or yellow or any other color. God is going to look at the heart. God cares about the heart. But if we have forgotten him, how are we going to get there? If we don't take time to remember who he is in our lives day by day, how will we get there? For us as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, history is an important aspect that determines our mission today. It determines the work that we do today for you and I. doesn't matter what station of life God has called you in. doesn't matter what occupation you're in. Big or small, significant or seemingly insignificant, God has a purpose for you this morning. By your identity, he says that you, I created you. I created you, I formed you with a special purpose, with a special mission. Not just to live an ordinary life. But I want you to, to go out and to share this message. To share the message of my soon second coming. But as you do so, do it in a way that shows love to one another. That shows care and empathy and compassion that sees those who are less fortunate and, and you stretch out your hand and you don't pass them by, but you offer your assistance. You see those who are going through persecution, you don't pass them by, but you offer assistance. What can I do to help them? You see those who are going through even racism, even those who are going through prejudice, even in our age today, but we don't pass by that they are like me. They are no different than I am. And we do not stand and we do not sit idly by and do nothing. We stand up for them. We stand up because 
Justice is not an issue of race. It's not an issue of one people or another people. Justice is an issue of, for all of us. And God is interested in justice. God is a God of justice. Amen? And we need to reach out. God has called us with this special mission as Seventh-day Adventist Christians. Just look at black history and pigeonhole it. And talk about it in that context and, and celebrate those who have come before us and, and look forward and say, but how much more can we achieve in life? What can we attain to? Yes, we can become president. We can do this and we can go to the moon and, and do all these great things. But really, when Jesus comes back, is, is that what he's going to look at and say, oh, but you accomplished all those things. You went to the moon and you went to Mars, or if we get there. But we went and did all these things. You became president and you conquered science and engineering and other study. You're great in those things. But friends, if they have no relationship with Jesus, of what value is that? Of what value is that history? So yes, black history is important and any other history, but God is interested in the history that he has been a part of in our lives. The history of our lives and God at the foundation. If God has been leading us to God is the one who's leading us into the future. What do we have to fear? What do we have to fear, friends? Nothing. We live in a world where we're seeing that fear. We live in a world and it's just been January. My wife was telling me it's been January, but it seems like everything has happened in one month. Right? Last month. <laughs> we had so many things happen. The world seemed like it was in turmoil. And the unfortunate events of the past week with the accident in California and the world and people coming to the realization that we need to forgive one another, we need to love one another, and, and it's like, what is happening in the world? And the, and the virus, and the coronavirus, and everyone's scared now, and, and countries are shutting down all sorts of travel to, to China and panic as we said in the world, and fear occupies the world. But when we look at history, is, is that what God has called us? God has called us to be afraid of what we're seeing today? Has God called us to fear the present or the future? No. As Seventh-day Adventist Christians, our identity is in him. Our identity is in him. And, and even this past week with, with the tragedy in California, you could hear in the news, everybody was talking about, oh, you know, I can... I can, I can see, my, or I can, my, my loved one is looking down upon me, and, and there was so much in shock and grief, and, but the entire world has this belief, the unfortunate belief in the state of the dead, an untruth that causes much more pain and sorrow. And the world is engrossed with fear, and they're looking for a way out. But you can see souls in need to know about the truth. And yet God has given us a special purpose as a church. God has given you and I the message that they do not have. We're not better than them, but God has given us a special message. He gave the children of Israel a special message, a special mission, and they were to fulfill it. God does not show partiality. He didn't say, no, you're not better than those other nations. The sense that I, 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 I value you in terms of your life and the quality of your life. But no, he said, I want you to go and reach them. And God has given us the same mission this morning. Regardless of your life history, God is saying, no, you have a message. There are people who are longing to hear the message. And what are you doing about it? And so as we look back at history, let us focus. Let us focus on what God has done. What has God done? What does he want us to do? today? What does he want us to do in the future? What does he want us to do in the future? And as we do so, we can go forward at victorious. We can go forward confident in who has led us in the past. We can go forward confident in who is the foundation of our lives. I don't know about you, friends, but what I go through in life, and the challenges that I face, when I know who created me, other people do not determine my value. In fact, one of my coworkers the other day, a few months ago, she was 
she was crying and my boss, he's a nice man, my boss, but he can be challenging, he can be difficult, he can be tough, I should say, <laughs> had gotten on her and she was filled with emotion. He, she was crying and, and I, I, I shared with her and I told her, your value is not determined by my boss. My manager does not determine your value. You are of much more important value. I remember she was overwhelmed and she was thankful for that reminder that, you know, you don't have to be affected by what someone tells you. They don't determine the direction of your life. Only God does. Only God does. So friends, when I contemplate who God is in my life, it gives me a chance to go forward, to live life today with hope, knowing that he who began that work in my life will do what? He'll complete it. He'll finish it. He will finish it. He will finish it. As we study history, regardless of where you've come from, regardless of where you've been, God wants to do a special work in your life this morning. God wants to do a special work in your life as you go forward into the future. He says, I have plans for you. I know who you are. I want you to gain victory after victory after victory in Judges, the children of Israel, for God, God, and the work that he did. And they faced defeat after defeat after defeat. You to gain victory after victory after victory. You see, that was the beauty of Joshua. Joshua, all the days of his ruling and all the elders that came after Joshua. And God led them to victory after victory after victory. And so as we go forward as a community of faith, my prayer is that we would remember that the history that God has given us would help us to remember our identity in him would help us remember the clear mission that he has given us and help us to remember that mission is what drives and determines the trajectory of our future. And we can go forward in faith, hopeful in what he will accomplish for us. Amen? Amen. How many of you would like to say this morning that I want, I want to remember what God, who God is, first of all. I want to remember what he has done in my life. How many of you want to make that decision this morning? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time when you have opened your word. We thank you for the reminder of remembrance. Lord, as you desired that the children of Israel would remember you, that they would remember the work that you had done in their life, not for any random sake, but that you would help them to realize their identity. You'd help them to realize the importance of their mission and the importance that that mission would determine and how the mission would determine the trajectory of their future. Father, we ask that you'd make that ex our experience this morning. And you help us never to forget you. Help us to be a people who seek victory after victory after victory, knowing that you are the one who goes before us. And regardless of what we go through in life, regardless of the challenges, Father, we are confident in who you are as a leader of our lives. And as we remember and reflect on those who came before us, Father, we are thankful for their contribution. We are thankful for their dedication and their faithfulness. We know it was not easy, but Lord, your hand can be seen and your hand was in their lives. And so we thank you, Father. We ask that as we depart from here, that you would go with us and go before us. In your name I pray, amen.